um, when I first put in the abstract for this session, it was just going to be a single author paper, but I ended up talking so much uh, with my friend Danny Aguilar from University of uh, from Sheffield Hallam University that I ended up uh, turning it into a jointly authored paper. She gave me so much help. So uh, she can't be here today because she's at a fundraiser for a skate park. Uh, she goes out to Palestine every summer and builds skate parks. So uh, it's really great to charity if anyone wants to donate. Um, but anyway, so um, I'm going to be talking about yeah, gender and skateboarding and gender in archaeology. And again, like when I wrote the abstract, um, I suppose I really made it sound like archaeology is this kind of feminist utopia where uh, gender <laughs> balance is, is amazing. But then the more I thought about it, I was like, well, that's not really true. So. <laughs> um, but one thing I suppose that is true is that in arts and humanities, um, in, on, at undergraduate level in the UK, there does tend to be a quite equal gender representation and some subjects are dominated <laughs> um, by males. Um, and sorry, some subjects are dominated by females and archaeology is one of them really at undergraduate level. So at UCL, um, according to Hamilton, um, around 60 to 70 percent of uh, archaeology undergraduates are female and apparently that's fairly consistent over the years. Um, there is kind of variation in the gender makeup of different subdisciplines of archaeology. So for example, if you go to the CAAs, the Computational um, Archaeology Annual Conference, you'll find that it's kind of dominated by males and you know, females are in the minority. Um, whereas osteology tends to be very female dominated. So that's my master's cohort at the University of Bradford, 100% female, uh, token male lecturer on the end. Um, and apparently every year had been similar. You know, they, they, there was talk of a mythological uh, male osteology student once, but you know, I never met one. So um, why, you know, why is this? Why is there this variable gender makeup just within archaeology? You know, I don't think there's any innate reason why males would do computational archaeology or why female females would do osteology. You know, it's just kind of happened. Um, and then again, so. Um, Whilst, most, whilst there's a lot of uh, female archaeology undergraduates, um, the numbers really dwindle as you move from uh, undergraduate level to professorial level. So, you know, 20% of UK archaeology professors uh, in 2013 were female, and that's, you know, better representation than for other subjects. It's 12% across all subjects, but it's a bit ridiculous it really if there's 60% of female undergraduates doing archaeology and then it's just 20% of female professors. And obviously it's been a really, you know, really quite a long time since Dorothy Garrett became the first uh, female professor. She's not just only the first female professor of archaeology, but the first female professor of anything at um, an Oxbridge University. And that was, I think, at a time when uh, women couldn't even be full members of the university. They could be kind of associate members or something. So why is it taking so long to get a reasonable gender balance at professorial level? Um, so moving into skateboarding. Um, I guess anyone who skates in the UK will have noticed that, at least at amateur level, it's pretty you know, male-dominated. Um, if you turn up at a skate park as a female, you know, you're pretty much guaranteed to be the only person there. And it's not that, there's, it's not that you, know, you get a frosty reception from people, it's just that you can't help but be, you, know, you can't help but stick out like a sore thumb. And it can make beginners feel particularly uncomfortable, I suppose. And I think maybe it can be off-putting for, you know, we, we end up in a situation where women are disinclined to start skating because they will stick out and when you're learning you don't really want more attention than you know you need really but again it's not really it's not innate you know why why are so few women skateboarding it's not innate at all if you look at other countries like Afghanistan and Palestine you know as much you know it's, it's almost regarded as a female sport lots and lots of uh, young girls and women skateboard so again no innate reason really as far as I can see why women don't skateboard as much as men so to try and um, redress this balance, uh, lots of skate parks around um, the UK have started putting on girls-only skate nights. And you know, it's, it's, very, uh, it's a nice idea. The idea is that women will be more inclined to start skating if they can come to a female-only environment and you know, be, um, feel more relaxed and find out a more supportive environment where they won't feel like they stick out like a sore thumb. So there's a proliferation of skate parks around the UK putting on these girls-only nights. Uh, these are the ones listed on Girls Skate UK. Um, at Cardiff, uh, skate, skate World in Cardiff, no, Ramp World in Cardiff, uh, it's not a girls only night, but it's a night when women get in for free, so the idea is it will encourage uh, more girls to go. Um, so anyway, there's been some criticism of girls only skate nights, so this is from Stephanie Nerding's blog, 
She says, I agree with an environment where beginners will feel like they can learn without being mowed down by the latest skate park hero. But I don't really see why it would be more scary to start skateboarding if you were a girl or if you were a boy. Which is a fair point, really. And the male beginners have it just as hard, you know. If you turn up at a skate park, it can be quite difficult to get, to get in and, you know, find space to skate as a beginner. She also says, I feel like little girls especially are never going to feel like it's okay to just turn up if they are constantly being told they are different and that they should attend a sex-specific night. So, you know, again, I, this was kind of my concern, really. I thought girls might go to the, the segregated night and then not then feel like they can't go to the, the normal sessions. And it might perpetuate this, like, gender segregation, which isn't what you want, really. And, you know, within, within academia, if you proposed a women-only reading group or a male-only reading group, it, you, know, you, just, you wouldn't be able to do that. In fact, someone asked me if I wanted to join a women-only book group, and I just had a big rant at them and told them why it was wrong. So, um, you know, whereas I'm obviously quite happy to go along to the girls' only skate nights, and why is that? You know, is it, is it wrong? So, um, to test what, um, what girls and women feel about um, the women-only skate nights, Danny and I created a survey which we distributed among the skateboarding community. Um, the questions were kind of leaning towards female skaters, but we, we, you know, we wanted male responses as well. But I suppose because of the way we distributed the, the survey to Girl Skate UK, etc., um, we ended up with 74% of respondents were female. Um, of the female respondents, 64% said they had attended a female-only night, and 96% of the females who attended said that they had liked the environment and that they would be inclined to go again. And um, so I was quite surprised, surprised, really. None of that negativity really that, you know, that I'd heard anecdotally really came out in the questioning. Um, so some uh, individual responses we got from people said, although I equally enjoy attending mixer sessions, the girls only sessions provides more friendliness and room for conversation. Someone else said, I only like projects, which is a skate park in Manchester's uh, girls night. Most of the girls stuff is super cliquey, which sucks. Uh, someone else said, I like them as much as I like mixed ses sessions. Female-only sessions are just a different atmosphere. Um, I'm a beginner and I feel more comfortable with more girls around. Very relaxed, no pressure and supportive environment. So on the whole, we got a, a overwhelmingly positive comments back about the girls-only nights, which was good. And interestingly, um, we asked respondents if they, um, if, they also, um, if they also attended mixed sessions. And almost everyone said that they also turned up at normal skate sessions as well, which is really important, I think. It shows that it's, you know, they, they are prepared to go along to normal sessions at skate parks as well. Um, we got some responses from LGBT people or people who identified as female but um, were not cisgender, I suppose it's the term. Um, and some responses said, the environment has always been extremely friendly. I had some trepidation initially as I thought being trans would be an issue but I've received nothing but kindness. Someone else said, I wish more female sessions would expressly include trans and LGBTQ plus people. And someone else said, I feel much safer in female-only sessions, though I would prefer it if they had something saying that gender variant skaters were allowed rather than it being just implied. So that's an interesting point. And, you know, maybe it might be nice if the women-only sessions um, expressly said that it was open to, um, you know, not just um, cisgender women. And interestingly, um, I think that uh, quite a lot, um, so blah, among the roller derby um, scene, apparently there's a massive trans um, scene in, in roller derby, and I don't really understand why that is, and it'd be interesting maybe if anyone can explain to me why that is, it's, it's, really, it's really fascinating. Um, anyway, so um, anyway, as I said, nowadays if you suggested a women's only reading group, um, you know, it would just seem ridiculous. And it doesn't seem like gender segregation has a place in academia or in archaeology. But obviously, this wasn't the case in the past. Um, lot, quite a lot of early female archaeologists um, started out at female-only colleges at Oxbridge, uh, which was really the only place where the only places where they could um, get a, get um, a degree in archaeology and have access to academia. Um, so Kathleen Ken Kenyon, Dorothy Garrard, Jaquetta Hawkes, uh, to name but a few were all studied at or um, taught at female-only colleges. And so I was wondering if maybe in the past, um, gender segregation in academia, maybe it did have its place at the time. Um, I know, so I went to Churchill College, Cambridge, uh, which was founded in the 1950s as a national memorial to Church, um, Winston Churchill. And um, when it was founded, it didn't admit, admit women members. But um, they, I think, uh, in the, sometime in the 60s, they began admitting women members, and the male undergraduates all wore black armbands because they were so annoyed about it. 
And so it kind of makes you realise how some of these, these early female archaeologists and early students at Cambridge must have felt very uncomfortable and may really been kind of shunned by their male peers. So maybe in the past there was a place for gender segregation in um, academia, even though obviously nowadays you, you would discourage it completely and you'd want, you know, you'd want uh, students to mix. So um, the next couple of slides were ones that Danny put together. So because um, I don't want to misrepresent her thoughts, I'm just going to read out her thoughts uh, on the topic. So she says, Two of our questions asked respondents about influential female skateboarders and skateboarders who had made an impact within specific geographic locales. We asked, if you were to think of older or more experienced skaters, ideally within the UK, who have influenced your practice, who springs to mind and in what way have they influenced you? The question directly asks about their skateboarding practice, and out of 47 responses to this question, 12 stated NA or some variation of none or no response. 28 made reference to specific female skaters with varying degrees of rationale. For example, several respondents simply named girl skaters with no real indication of what specifically was influential about them. Some of these respondents talked about these female skaters having good style, being able to take a slam, and having good attitude. Six of the respondents in this question referred particularly to female skaters who had influenced them because they supported other female skateboarders and or helped to make wider participation possible. One respondent referred to a female skateboarding academic as being influential because of the work she had produced on the topic of skateboarding. As a standalone question, this range of responses indicates that skateboarding practice is understood as not simply being about the physical aspects of women's involvement in skateboarding, but that being a supportive community member is also central to being a female skateboarder. One of the respondents who identified as male articulated in the North American, um, articulated the North American female skateboarder, Alyssa Steamer, as influential, stating, Alyssa Steamer, as a 14-year-old boy, I questioned her position on Toy Machine. Then I watched Welcome to Hell. I loved the way that skateboarding at that time made me challenge my perceptions. The fact that Alyssa was on one of the most forward-thinking and legit teams at the time was groundbreaking. It was this kind of open-mindedness and challenging of stereotypes that really made me love skateboarding culture. Being an outsider, yet being open to all people was so rad. I hope that young people today still have influences and it doesn't become segregated, especially with the looming Olympic involvement. His articulation of Steamer as influential because of the radical space of openness she occupies is very interesting. It suggests that for some, this is an important quality, to be innovative and to challenge stereotypes. Several other respondents also referenced Steamer as a female skateboarder with a particularly high level of achievement and ability. Similarly, similarly to this, another respondent raised several political issues around female influence and involvement in her answer to this question. Her response indicates that it is everyday supportive and non-high level female skaters who are important to her. She articulates attention over the marketing of good female skaters as underwear models, and she refers to the Brujas, a group of female skateboarders who identify as intersectional feminists and who challenge the male domination of the subculture and white male patriarchy. The presence of Brujas in general, and their being referenced in this questionnaire, highlights how much female skateboarders have continued to occupy a radical space in skateboarding, in the way that the position themselves in, rel in relation to both mainstream feminist culture and mainstream skateboarding culture. Another respondent made reference to Nefarious, a female skate crew based in London who aimed to support and publicise female skateboarders. Um, so we found as well that several um, respondents referenced these um, influential people. So Jenna Selby, um, Danny Gallagher, who founded Girl Skate UK, Lucy Adams, Stephanie Nerding and Josie Laurie. So we found there was a real mix of people mentioning skateboarders who they admire for their skateboarding skills and people such as Danny Gallagher, who've been really influential in founding websites and, and uh, founding Girls Only Nights and trying to encourage others to start skating. So it wasn't just you know, good skateboarders that they respected, it was also those who helped to encourage other women to start skateboarding. Taken together, these two questions point to the importance of a supportive, open and inclusive attitude and support for other female skaters as being influential and impactful qualities demonstrated by the skateboarders mentioned. Being good at skateboarding is of course relevant and was mentioned as being important to several respondents, 
but the interest respondents showed in highlighting the participatory support networks developed by female skateboarders was particularly interesting. And again, I saw um, parallels really with um, archaeology. If you so, the Trailblazers website is fantastic for its bios of um, you know significant uh, women in the history of archaeology. And I found as well that sort of looking through the bios on Trailblazers.com, there was a real division between um, you know women who was, were respected for their achievements in archaeology, and also other women as well who, whilst achieving a lot in archaeology, had really made an effort to encourage other women in archaeology. Um, so Carol Ward is mentioned on trailblazers.com for her role in the Women's Physical Anthropology Mentoring Network. And a number of other women archaeologists are mentioned for similar reasons. So again, I saw parallels really with um, role models in terms of you know, their significant achievements and also um, their role in sort of mentoring and encouraging others. Oh, um, so I put in a question in the questionnaire about street skating. Because um, I thought that, well, there's no, as I said, there's, I don't think there's any innate reason why uh, women don't skate as much as men. I did wonder if there might be kind of cultural reasons why women might be less inclined to want to get in trouble. Um, so I was sort of asked about this, and I basically found there's no different. Um, female and male respondents equally uh, felt that they weren't able to street skate as much as they wanted to, and a number of different reasons were cited. Um, one person said, uh, to be fully honest, I find the street, scheme, the street scene pretty intimidating and don't really feel comfortable just going out skating. That was a male respondent. And a female respondent said, I don't feel like running from the police anymore. Um, and someone else says, I'd be very embarrassed to try stuff in a public place alone where people are likely to stop and look. And they um, also mentioned not wanting to piss off people who regard skating the streets as vandalising. And um, I suppose really that's my reaction, really. I'd, I'd really love to go street skating more, but the last time I tried, just I had a security guard shouting at me and just made me feel so horrible that I didn't skate at all for, I think, a month. And um, it's, you know, whilst we can do everything we can to um, increase participation within the skateboarding scene itself, we can't really do anything about the public, um, which is a real shame. And I think that potentially might put, put off all sorts of people from skateboarding, not just women, like men as well. And as I said, it, um, males and female respondents equally found that they weren't able to street skate as much as they'd like. So in conclusion, um, I think girls' skate nights seem to have been positively received by attendees and are encouraging women to start skating. Hopefully they won't be necessary in the future in the same way that you know, se uh, gender segregation in academia doesn't really happen anymore. Um, I think that women are, are, the importance of women for inspiring other women and girls is equally important in archaeology and skateboarding. And also, yeah, I mean, we should recognise that skateboarding can be daunting for male beginners too, as e equally as much as for female beginners. So maybe more beginners' nights uh, would be good instead of um, instead of women-only nights. Um, and you know, there's advanced beginners. So at Manchester Projects has an a beginner session, then also an advanced beginner session, which I think is quite a good, important distinction. And yeah, just more um, beginner sessions. Also, uh, Cardiff um, Ramp World now now publishing on their website the quietest times to go, which I think is also really helpful as well. Um, so yeah, there's lots we can do to get everyone skating. Thank you.